Welcome back to the channel. So the next thing we're going to do is drill the holes. There's three holes that gets drilled in from the bottom that attaches the bottom plate here or floor to the sub base and the base. So I've super glued the base to the sub base and then the sub base to the plate here. Then I've also got in our mounting lugs here and then I've got in some temporary screws there holding that on. And I went ahead and rounded these lugs off. the belt sander fixture that I made in the last video if you haven't seen that it's in the description there'll be a link to it so it did a good job rounding these off actually these are at a five degree taper which all of this base will get eventually machined with a five degree taper on the outside here so I was able to set the table at five degrees and then round these off so we'll get these three holes drilled here and then we'll get this taken back apart and then I can mount these two pieces here super glue them on and then we'll drill and tap the holes for these and then we'll do the same for the cylinder and go ahead and get that mounted and then we'll get our holes drilled in here for the studs for the cross guide so a lot of drilling and tapping and I'm going to do this in the smitty but you could do this in the drill press just the same as the smitty so we're still attempting to do this with without using the without using the milling machine so i'll get this set up and we'll get these holes drilled and countersunk and then tap
Okay, we got all those holes drilled and tapped and countersunk. So we got three here in the center, bolting everything down. And we've got two here, holding on this main bearing here. And then we've got this bearing bolted to the base here. And we've got our two holes here that'll hold the cylinder on. And then I went ahead and drilled the holes for these studs, which will hold the crosshead guides. And went ahead and made some studs and screwed those in there. And then I messed up here, but I was able to flip this piece around and then this is actually gonna get cut off here. So this will all go away. So the next thing we're gonna work on are these bearings. And I've left them overly long on purpose. So I'll show you what we're gonna do. And this is not something that I come up with. I did see this that a, another person did it this way and I like the way they, they did it. So our bearing cap, or our bearing, tire bearing, looks like this. It's got a radius on the top. So it looks like this and it'll get the hole in there. So what I've done is I left the pieces overly long and then I've cut a disc, same thickness as the bearings. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on the face plate and we're gonna put a 9 16th hole in the center here so I left it long so that we was cutting a full hole instead of trying to cut half of a hole. It's going to end up being half of a hole, but to cut the full hole, I left it long. So once we cut the hole, then we will take the piece and we'll machine it down to length. So we'll be left with this. And then we're going to lock tight the disc into here. So what we'll end up with is the shape that we're after. With the disc in here. So this will get lock tighted into here. It's right in the center here, halfway up. So we'll do the hole first and then we'll machine this off to half the height of this circle and then lock tight this in here. And then once it's smoothed out on the sides and blended out with aluminum, especially after it's painted, you can't even tell, you won't be able to tell that there's a disc in there. So that'll form our bearing. Then once we get that done, then we'll actually bolt them back onto the frame and then we'll go back in here and machine this out for the bearing. So I'm gonna probably run brass bearings in this, brass or bronze, whatever I can come up with. So that'll get locked tighted into here and then it'll get bored out in the center. I believe it's a quarter inch for the crankshaft. So in order to do these, um, we're gonna take them off of here and then we're gonna mark the center here and then we'll mark our height and make us a punch mark that we can line it up with on the face plate. We're gonna do this on the lathe and then I'm gonna put a sacrificial piece of metal behind it. It's because we gotta bore all the way through it. So I don't wanna bore into my face plate. So I'll put a piece of metal behind it so that we can bore all the way through it. So I'll get this marked out and center punched and then get it set up in the lathe on the face plate and then show machining this off and then once we get that done then we'll machine it down to height.
Okay, so I got the bearings, got the disc Loctited in there now, so we drilled the hole like I went over and then We made this disc to go in there and then I said that this gets cut down to the center But it doesn't it get cut all the way down. It just gets cut down. There's a dimension on the drawing for how far to cut that down so then I Loctited the disc in there Took it to the belt sander a little bit so I think once that's uh, primered and painted and I possibly will sandblast this model before I paint it. But either way, I think that'll blend in good and that's a good way to make that rounded feature. I'm not sure how else to do it. You could, you could do it with a rotary table and then machine this off so that it's square here in the corners. But that would take, I think, more work and more setup time than what this did. And if you're only using a lathe, then this is certainly an option. Put this piece on the faceplate, bore the hole, make the disc, and then lock tie it in there. Same thing here. This will get bored out in the center and a bushing put in there. So that's going to do it for this episode. Um, I want to tell you about an upcoming show that I'm going to be at. If you're anywhere in the Boone, North Carolina area. Coming up is the High Country Crank Up, July 24th through the 26th, and then I'll be there on Saturday. And there'll be steam engines, hit and miss engines, model engines, tractors. There's usually some steam tractors and steam engines both. So it's a pretty good time if you're in the area, stop by and say, hey, I'll have some engines there, some full size and some model engines. So next time we will continue on with these bearings. We will get this laid out. This gets cut off here and then at an angle. So this whole section here gets cut out. So we'll get that laid out and start working on it next time. Thanks for watching.